But there's no love lost here, and they're kind enough just days before their fight to join us at the same time face-to-face on this program to talk about what is about to transpire in London on Saturday afternoon here in America. I'm talking about Chris Wade and Brendan Lochnane, two of the very best fighters in the PFL, two of the very best featherweights on the planet, kind enough to join us right now to do this. I'm very excited about this. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Chris, thank you for doing this, my friend. Brendan, thank you for doing this as well. Amen. Chris, you doing well? Doing great. It's good to see you again. It's it, been a while. Yes, How are you doing? I'm doing great. I really appreciate you guys doing this, and uh, I suspect you can see each other as well, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, you just happened to see each other. You just did the face-off, and so I'd love to start there. And by the way, I, I'm, I'm being honest when I say this. You guys have done such a great job of building up this fight, and what I love so much about it, it, it feels very real. It feels like you don't like each other at all, and it feels like uh, you both want to kick each other's ass on Saturday, and that's what the fans want to see. Chris, can I ask you first, where does this animosity towards Brendan come from? Because it does feel like a very genuine thing building up to this fight. Yeah, so... The animosity for me, it starts last year in the finals when I lost. And, um, you know, I got some texts from family saying like, yo, you got to go online. You got to see what this dude Lognane is writing. He's like, he's on one. He's in the stands, like just going off about, um, you know, the way the fight ended and that he was the real final, et cetera. So I went on Twitter. I looked at what he had to say. And, uh, you know, he said that he was going to, teach me a lesson this year first fight of the season about respect and uh because i didn't shake hands with mo vlid at the end so you know being a guy that grew up wrestling and someone who knows what you know about being humble and victory and taking losses i took offense to that because you know he's sitting on the sideline chirping you know twitter fingers and at that point i was basically like you know fuck this guy that's enough I could, I could feel when, when he's telling this story, Brendan, that you're like getting antsy, that you want to say something in reply. So uh, do, you, do you recall what Chris is saying here? And, and do you have your side of the story? So this humble martial artist, yeah, that knocks Kyle Botney out and starts screaming in his face. And the same humble guy that gets his ass wiped for five rounds by Mob Lead. Mob Lead is the kindest, nicest guy I've met in the sport. Puts his hand out. And Chris is like, no, fuck you, go away. Is that kind and humble to you, Ariel? Tell me. Did you do that, Chris? I did take my hand away, but me and Mo Vlid spoke, and I, I made it right with him. He is a good guy, but uh, this guy is not a good guy, and he's not the fucking MMA police, <laughs> and he has no business getting involved because he's a fucking alternate sitting there, and you should have just kept your mouth shut, and you couldn't. You but had to get involved in the it. fight because you no. were a spectator. You had to get in the fight because no. <laughs> you were watching. You were watching. I didn't keep it up. Uh, yeah, Brent what happened to uh, first fight of the regular season, Brendan? What happened? Bro, uh, I, didn't, want me to I didn't get the text yet from your manager of you I, saying that you wanted I to fight me. I'm still waiting I, for that text. After this, so, so everyone knows that I asked for your ass. You're the easy ticket, bro. I was like, get me that yeah, one way. I bet so, you so, did. You're full of shit. You want none of it. Was, anyone who ever put a so, singlet on, you're allergic to them. You're allergic to anyone so who ever put a singlet on. I was so pissed I off that I didn't you. get nearly Why fight? Not, well, let me let me ask about that because are you guys in the same hotel right now? Oh yeah. Yeah. Why is Chris's Wi-Fi exceptionally better than Brendan's? What's going on here? Like Chris is crystal clear now, and I want he's got, he's got that. What's he's going got on? That shit English cell phone plan. That's why. <laughs> I want you to have your say, Brendan. But uh -oh. can't even hear you. I, I I almost feel like we need to. What are you on? Are you on LTE or Wi-Fi? What's going on? Because I feel. Are you on Wi-Fi right now, Brendan? I'm on the Wi-Fi, bro. I don't know maybe, what's going on. Maybe take off the Wi-Fi and go on LTE because I think Chris is probably on LTE, right? And that yeah, might, I took it all. Though. Yeah, yeah, that might be stronger because I want you to have your say. Um, while you do uh, that, I do want to ask Chris this, and then you'll we'll we'll see that you'll uh, recalibrate, so to speak. Uh, I I heard that you were saying that uh, Brendan is, or you you believe that Brendan is jealous, or jeal or who who no. he believes that you're Brandon. jealous of him. <clears throat> Yes, he thinks I'm jealous exactly. because he has more Instagram followers and he makes more money for no reason. 
And uh, is that true? Thinks that it like consumes me, but I'm not a jealous guy, man. I told them in the last interview, and this was genuine. I said, as long as you're when you're not fighting me, I hope everybody in this community, in this MMA family, makes as much money as they possibly can. I don't understand why they pay him what they do because I think he's useless, but he's convinced them that he has this following that doesn't exist. Uh, so they, you know, they wrote him a few checks. He's making more money than he deserves. Good for him. Money talks, bullshit walks. You're an absolute bullshit. Nobody cares about you. You're out here harping about why didn't they do the fight in New York? Because nobody cares about you. You don't sell anything. Nobody gives a fuck about Chris Wade. Unfortunately, that's the truth. You're jealous about it. But guess what? Saturday night, we can have a little fist fight and sort it out. No problem. It's fine. Uh, is it yeah. is is that true that you didn't want to have this fight in London, Chris? I just wanted to, as the one seed, finding out that the first week was in New York City. I was like, hey, why aren't we oh, playing this up and doing it in Manhattan? But, uh, you know, they went into bed with the London thing months ago. So it was a little, uh, they didn't know who was going to make the playoffs at the time. They only knew Brendan was going to make the playoffs because they were willing to carry him physically into the playoffs with shit opponents. So they were like, listen, we're going to get this guy in. So let's go over there. It's like the guy that's in the semifinal, that shit opponent, the same guy that's in the semifinal, you mean? Oh, man. What is going on with the connection? Chris is so good, and and Brendan, your connection is so bad for some reason. Are you on LTE now? It's it's like a metaphor for just... Why don't you, is. Chris, uh, Brendan, do me a favor, cut out and come back in, like get, get out of the zoom and come back in because it's not fair to you that we can't yeah, get out of here, bro. No, no, no. <laughs> I just well, go, go full screen on, uh, on Chris here for a second. Uh, you feel like they've been, uh, trying to build him up that they've just, you know, are giving him easy fights. Uh, isn't this whole thing supposed to be a meritocracy and a playoff thing? That's what, you know, that's what they sell Right. It's not supposed to be like, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. No. Well, listen, they had already gone in and committed to London and he had a guy pull out of the fight. But I know from talking to people that he was turning other replacements down. And I know that the guy they chose as the replacement for his second regular season bout was 0-2 before that fight. How do you get signed to a big promotion off of two losses? Unless they're trying to carry that red coat into the playoffs. And why do you think they want him so you bad don't. to be in the playoffs? Well, they need him. They need him because they already were coming to London. They need somebody. He's the he's the biggest English name that they have. So they were like, they they gave him my, uh, some poor guy that was out of shape. <laughs> you weren't impressed with his wins this and, season? Dude, come on. They were <laughs> disgusting. He didn't. He didn't even win the first fight. Uh, he headbutted the guy intentionally to to get out of it. Disgusting. Disgusting. Wow. Yes. Uh, I saw you guys do the face off earlier, and you were talking to someone. You're like, "How'd this guy get in here?" There seemed to be people chirping at you. What was going on there? <sighs> yeah, we went into this like office building at the Sun. Here it was like a news thing. I didn't bring anyone with me because I don't want to put my teammates through three hours of nonsense. He brings it all his cheerleaders and it's real quiet. They're doing like a production thing and he's got one asshole there just fucking chirping, chirping, chirping in the background. No one's saying anything from the PFL. I'm like, who is this guy over here? Get this guy out of here. He's like literally cutting into the audio of what we're trying to do, you know? And then I look at him and he's just smiling at me, smiling at me. So I told him I'll fucking crack your skull open too. (laughs) Who was it? No, one of his cheerleader teammates, a nobody. Who was that, Brendan? He's in. He's Welcome probably, back. He's probably laying in his bed right now. He's underneath Brendan hey. right now. I was the one, <laughs> hey, I'm about you. So basically, what happened was Chris wanted to do an interview, telling everyone how professional he is. I'm this professional Chris Wade, and then as soon as anybody says anything, he starts going off like the little bitch that he is. Uh, 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 uh. That's exactly what happened there, Rio. Who was that guy yelling yeah. at him? Oh, that's Kane. That's my boy. That's my boy. My boy just uh, bro, it's on. This, bro, the his thing boyfriend. about Chris Wade is he's online, 
He is online talking about. What's the thing about? I'm going to do this in the street and that. He's online talking absolute rubbish, bro. Yeah. So when you see us, keep the same energy. But no, he sits in the hotel with his head down like the little bitch that he is. Dude, listen. Anytime after this fight, you bring that fucking pussy over by us, and I swear to you, we'll go out in the road. Yeah. And I will take no. him and I will slam him on the concrete over and over again Nobody. until he seizes. I will. I will. Nobody. That's the kind of guy I am. Do yes, I will. Yes, You'll I will. Nothing. What are you, Conor I'm McGregor? Not. You'll do nothing. Yeah, Yo, doesn't no. he remind you, Ariel, of like a sickly Conor McGregor? Look no. Mad. Look how mad you are. A little are, bit. Bro. Wow. Yeah. Relax. Chill out, Chris. Relax. This is what he keeps telling me to relax. Dude, I am relaxed, you know, but I also will going, snap your teammates' yeah, neck going, while being relaxed. I'm relaxed. Trust me. I've been yeah. around the block. Brent, calm down. Yeah. Brendan, can your I ask Wi-Fi you? Your Wi-Fi sucks, just like you. Uh, Brendan, can I ask you? I was looking at the odds. Uh, you are you are the underdog going into this fight. How do you feel about that? Exactly where I like to be. I love to be the underdog. That brings the best out of me, Ariel. Do you feel like yeah. people are... Do you know what they call that? Tell they me. call that easy money where I'm from. <laughs> uh, when you were yeah. when you were off, he was saying that they're trying to like set up, you know, you to get to the playoffs, give you easy matchups. You're the guy. They're going to London. Do you feel like there's anything, you know, any truth to that? Do you feel like you are getting an easier road to the finals as opposed to someone like Chris who has been in the PFL for what uh, since 2013, 14, something crazy like that? No, yeah, no, yeah. since 17 yeah. when they started, yeah. No one cares about you, shut up. All right, so basically, Ryoji Kuto is in the semi final. Where are the two guys that he fought, bro? Kudo's in the Ryoji? other side. He's ready to fight. Where bro, are they? You were a Where minus they, 1200 favorite in both fights you fought. That's disgusting. Where, disgusting. Where, That's where almost I criminal. That's out. almost criminal. My opponent got here That's a crime. in the semi final ready to fight Bubba. Where are your guys, Dude. bro? He's in the he's in the semifinal because he touched that dude on the chin. Luckily, in the first round, or he would not be here. And you what know what? Maybe he that? should be in your what was he should be in your that? spot, and you shouldn't even fucking be here because you didn't beat him. You headbutt him, and then the judges oh, took one under the table to, to send you over here. You're, all American you're shit. wrestling, bro. You shit. All American Watch, wrestling. watch. Chris, let me ask you, yeah, you've, you've been in the UFC, you fought some tough guys, you've been in the promotion for several years now. I was referring to that picture thing that they did of you, and obviously uh, some of those were from the, the UFC days of your, your, your transformation over the years, but where would you rank Brendan? You know, because Brendan was on Contender Series, a lot of people, including myself, thought he should have gone in the contract. There's always this, what if, what if he would have gone in that contract? How far would he have gone in the UFC? Where would you rank Brendan and what he brings to the table in terms of the guys that you have fought over the last few years, his skill set, how tough he is, where would you rank him? Is this one of the toughest opponents you've had to date? I mean, it's I've fought guys like Islam, uh, you know, so it's you, you can't. He's definitely up there for sure. He's an experienced fighter. He's a tough fighter. He's uh, I think he's um, I think he's a top ten, top top fifteen guy anywhere in the world, no matter where you put him. I have respect for definitely his fighting ability. And uh, I would definitely put him up in like the top top five guys that I've ever competed against, for wow. sure. Wow, this is nice. We see, Brendan, he just gave you a compliment there. I thought he was going to say you were like one of the worst. I, th th that was very nice. Ariel, they just did a face-to-face. -face. I said the exact same thing. As a martial artist, I respect him, but I think he's a dick of a person. And that's the truth. I agree. You're a piece of shit too. The feel is mutual, bro. I know it is. It's amazing. Brendan, have you ever felt this way about an opponent going into a fight? Um, what it is, Ariel? I get on with everyone backstage. We spend a lot of time together here at the PFL, especially when we do the 17 day bubble and all that shit. Like we're all cool. Guess what? The back staff don't like Chris Wade. That's why they kicked him out of the PFL at 155 and he cut all this weight to make 145 because they don't like his ass. None of the fighters like him. None of the other coaches like him. So I'll do everybody a favor on Saturday night. Is that true, Chris? No one oh, likes yeah. you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's funny. Is they say the same thing about you behind your back. So, wow. What's you going know. on at PFL? Yeah. 
got kicked out of the PFL at 155 because you didn't want you no more. They're like, bro, you've done it four times now. Relax, get out. And you're like, how about if I cut one leg off and cut 30 pounds? Can I get in then and cry about it? So you're like, oh, okay, go on then. Is that yeah. true, Chris? Did that really happen? Yeah, Did you really yeah, get kicked out? To say. What, what really happened was during... Uh, I had a clause in my contract that every time I make the semifinals, I come back for another season. And then I lost in the semis in 2019. And a force majeure clause was used during the pandemic to break my 155 contract. And I basically, they, they basically said, we only have a spot for you at 45, or you could be the first alternate if someone goes down at 55. And I said, I haven't competed in a year. I need to make some money for my family. And I'm not taking an alternate situation. I need to fight multiple times this year. And I committed to go down to 45. Okay. Uh, Brendan, um, Chris has been you know, vocal about you know, some things that he was unhappy with regarding his pay and this situation and whatnot. How would you describe you know, where you think Chris is at going into this fight? Do you feel you know, he's been in the promotion for several years now? Uh, hasn't quite gotten over the hump and gotten that million dollars. Do you feel like all the pressure is on him? How would you describe where you think he's at going into this fight? Bro, there's, Ariel, there's no shame in not winning the PFL. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, he's not won it yet because this is the hardest thing I've ever done. Rory said it. I said it. Pettis has said it. Auburn Mercier said it. So in terms of that, there's no, like, he didn't win the PFL because this is the hardest thing ever. In terms of pay, the only reason I brought that up is because he put on a Twitter status saying, I'm sitting by the phone waiting for my pay rise. And I was like, bro, the phone won't ring. They'll just replace you. And that's basically how that came around. And I told you the phone rang. Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> has, okay. Has that been sorted, Chris? Are you okay now it's with everything? Been, it's been sorted. We're good. You're all good because I saw you were doing a lot of you were speaking up about it, and then sometimes that could be you know a little dicey, right? Sometimes that could could well, bite you. Yeah, it sucks, and I've been I've been put in that situation a couple of times, unfortunately, me in my career. And all I wanted was just to not take a pay cut and go backwards from the Bochniak fight. I didn't think it was fair to move forward deeper into a playoff format and to get a reduction of pay. And that was my point. And it's been made right, and I appreciate them. And that's that's it. Uh, Brendan, I, I heard that you say that uh, Chris likes to block punches with his face. Yeah, he's a zombie, bro. Like, uh, after watching his fights, especially with, um, oh, I forget the guy's name, the, the Russian fella, he took a lot on the chin, spinning hook kicks, jabs to the nose. Yeah. He just like, he's just that typical wrestler. He's the one that just eats everything with his mouth and then just grabs hold and like holds on like like this. That's basically what it is. Like what you've done all what you've done all season with your eye fucking shut last fight, grabbing on. onto the guy. Wait a second. 40, Wait a knows, second. Bro. Yo, pull up a picture of his face last fight. <laughs> pull up a picture 40, of his face. He's got a vagina 40, for an eye and he's oh, hanging on 40, to the guy. Dude, you're a mess. People, you are such a hypocrite. Finished. You're a shit it wrestler and you've been getting by uh, on shit wrestling. Uh, I'm gonna get you a singlet after this fight. And some wrestling Thanks. shoes. We're going to teach you. So what is, what is your prediction, Chris? How do you see it going down on Saturday? How do you see this fight playing out? No, we were talking about this before. It's, 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 the, he's a very tough uh, competitor. And I see definitely it being a war in there. But I think that at the end of the day, he lacks severely in the, in the ground game department. And he's going to get exposed there. So you're going to try to, I mean... We know what your skill set is. We know what kind of fighter you are. You're, you're going to try to bring your your American wrestling to him, right? No, I mean I don't I don't force anything anymore at this experience level in my career. I would prefer to stand up and strike and and but when opportunities present themselves, I will take advantage of them for sure. What's that, Brendan? You do not want to stand up and fight. Why are you talking rubbish, bro? I'm, you you think don't that want to I'm stand up and... your fucking pitter patter. Really? Really? 13 k, Bro, you got two stoppages in 40 You've fights. been fighting tuna cans over in England. 13 KOs. You've oh. been beating up... There's you. There's you, bro. Yeah, those are your Pull first on. opponents. Those are your first few opponents. That's who you knocked there out you go, when bro. you went fucking 
five and oh, <laughs> six and oh, seven and oh. You're fighting slow people. Bro, you Kyle Botniak, relax, bro. It's not the end of the world. He's like, never been mean, finished, you on, fool. He has a deeper UFC career than you ever had. Uh, Brendan, can I ask you the same question? Can I ask you the same question? How do you see it playing out on Saturday? Listen, like he said, he's a tough-ass guy. I'm not sure if he's been finished before, but I haven't. And yeah, it's going to be one sure. of them. It's going you to be know. a dog kill. And we're going to fight out Saturday night. Ariel, the fans are in for a treat, man. Are, are you expecting 15 minutes here? Do you, do you foresee this going the distance? It depends if that zombie chin holds up. It's been holding up pretty well so far, so let's see. The zombie chin. Wow. I mean, I have to say, he, he looks pretty good here right now. I mean, you both look great. Yeah. He acts like I'm the dude that they put in to fight uh, Sean, what's his, O'Malley, you know, that took a fucking beating. Oh, yes. Like, come on, bro. Get over it. Uh, Brendan, do you, do you think that, I mean, maybe, you know, you're in London, a uh, lot of hype surrounding you coming to PFL. Is there actually a case to be made that you have more pressure on your shoulders on Saturday? I always have pressure. I put the pressure on myself, Ariel, and the fact that we've got this rivalry going on, he, he has no idea how much that has helped me in this camp. It's pushed me to places in this camp that I didn't even know I could go to anymore, and I'm just so happy, and I thank him for that, and I can't wait to show everyone Saturday night. With all due respect to the other side of the bracket, I feel like this is the unofficial final. I feel like the the winner of this fight is is winning the million dollars. How big would that be for you, Chris? That would be huge. Um, I was talking about it before, but like I just think back on to last year and how I felt coming up short and how I felt like I let my daughter down and and uh, how emotional that makes me and and uh, you know also just for my legacy. Like I need I need to be the champion of a, of a major promotion. Um, and the, my goal, I'm fixed on it and I'm going to get it. When you hear that, Brendan, is there a part of you that's like, you know what? I'd like to see this guy win, you know, the, you know, legacy, you know, this is, this is important stuff. Does, do you well, feel- he's a dick. <laughs> he is a dick. <laughs> so you're joking me. The guy's a dick. That's all fake. Don't listen to this guy, Ariel. You're my boy, in it? Just know this guy's a area and all that is fake. You're my but anyway, boy. Fuck this red coat. <laughs> <laughs> that million dollars is one thing. It really is. But to get that gold belt in the PFL, after what you have to go through to get there, that is a whole different story. That This belt has to be the most respected belt out there because of what we have to do to get it. And that's a fact. All right. Well, we'll see how it all plays out. Saturday, London. It's on ESPN here in America. I believe Channel 4 over there in the UK. Brendan Lochnane, Chris Wade. Guys, honestly, tremendous job. And what I like most about it is it all feels very real, authentic. Two guys who, you know, aren't friends, who don't really like each other, who are going to battle on Saturday. You've done a tremendous job of building this up. Thank you so much for doing this. A lot of guys wouldn't, so I appreciate you guys very much. Good luck with the weight cut. Good luck on Saturday. Ariel, my man, thank you. All right, there they are. Brendan Lochnane, Chris Wade. That was fun.